I might have to start using cursor again. I stopped using it mostly because I like the separation of having AI in a separate window in my terminal because I'm using Claude code. You can find a video all about how I'm using AI right there. But now cursor came out with something new, cursor CLI. If you haven't seen it, you can go to cursor.com slash CLI and download and install it today. Um, I think it is for literally Windows and Mac. I don't see anything saying otherwise because it is a CURL command with bash, uh, but it works in literally any terminal. It even shows a ghosty warp, you know, cursor, Android Studio, JetBrains, whatever you would like. And so is this good enough to get me to switch off of, you know, Clon Code? I just recorded a video about how I might start using GPT-5 over Clon Code because I think it is a little bit better for almost everything, maybe including code. You can find that up on the top right as well, but maybe cursor CLI is the thing that actually pushes me over the edge because it's a little bit easier to use GPT-5. I don't know if it's going to compare cost-wise, especially how much I use Claude code until that gets nixed or nerfed. But yeah, I figured I would spend some time with it and let you know what I think. Now, I have been a pretty uh, heavy user of Claude Code. I have the Claude Code Max plan, the $200 a month one, just because I use it so frequently for everything, not just coding, but also interacting with MCP servers like Notion, also, you know, writing documents, also using FFmpeg commands. I use it for so much outside of code that it's just become second nature to use Claude in almost every instance of the terminal. But Cursor Agent is in beta, so that's helpful to note, but it uses OpenAI's GPT-5 by default. I am using the pay-as-you-go. I think you have to be on that pay-as-you-go in order to use this, I don't know how many credits you might get uh, on just the $20 a month cursor plan. It's not <laughs> entirely evident. The commands are rather limited right now, but you can switch between different models. You can have it auto run um, as well as specific like Vim mode. Uh, but outside of that, there's not too much that you can have this do. GPT-5 by default, but you can use Opus 4.1 or Sonnet. Now, to get a good test, I did use this in a JavaScript project as well as a Laravel project just to see uh, the output of code. And of course, a lot of this is just dependent on specific models. This is GPT-5. But how does this feel to use compared to something like Claude or even something like Open Code? where you are using your own API keys, but this has that little, I don't know, cursor flare, that, that extra helpful boost to the prompts. The first thing that I want to make note of is there is no easy way to add MCP servers through Cursor's agent, Cursor CLI. You do, can, and you should use MCPs through the global configuration or even project configuration with the mcp.json, cursor agent will pick those up. And again, same thing with the rules. Now I have gotten used to within something like Claude or even something like open code where you have the ability to have these agents to say, uh, hey, I want it to just analyze in this case, like open code as slash init, Claude has slash init. I use this pretty frequently because a lot of times when I'm starting a project, I just want it to get as much context as it can note or can find within that particular project. Now, Cursor seems to do a decent job without that to basically say, if I was to say, uh, tell me more about this project. For example, I don't have any .md rules or anything like that, but usually the slash in it is a good starting point that I like to use if I'm using something like open code or if I'm using something like Claude. Why? Because then it helps me get this starting point of, hey, here's what the project is. And theoretically, your AI is then pulling from that file, whether that's a Claude.md or within open code, it's agents.md. Theoretically, every single time you run a prompt, it's running it through that file to say, hey, here's what this project is about. Uh, let's make sure we use this, we do this. It's nice to have that. Now, of course, I could have a create that file and give a prompt to do that, but having those kind of built-in 
server prompts, if you will, within open code, the slash init, Claude code slash init has been helpful for me because then I know, okay, it's already gathering the context it needs. Now I'm just adding extra bits and pieces. For example, with even Claude, um, anytime I add something, I could just say, hey, let's add this to memory. And of course, some people say that that adds it to the memory of that particular instance. Sometimes it does also make sure to add or update that particular Claude.md file without having to explicitly state it like I would within cursor to say, let's you know create uh, an agents.md with information about the project. And that would probably be like the thing that I have been using, using cursor CLI that I am lacking that usually comes within something like Claude or open code. Now again, I am kind of comparing this within Claude and open code, things that I'm used to using in their own separate window, in their own separate you know, terminal instance, and not necessarily in the built-in terminal of VS Code cursor or anything else. And so there probably are some benefits of using this in an integrated terminal, like within cursor, uh, but this comparison is mostly just the separate instance like I Prefer. So a lot of that is then going to come down to what can you do within the UI that is better within cursor CLI, or is it just make prompts better? And in my, you know, playing around with it, uh, open code and Claude just seem to do better with the prompts that I give them, even without the extra nifty features that cursor CLI doesn't have. For example, I can't reference a file if I want to say, uh, now we know in agents.md, um, I believe this would still work because it's kind of knowing it, but it's nice to like do the pop-up of like, I'm wanting to reference a specific file. I know that this works within cursor, um, and maybe it does work within the cursor CLI in cursor itself. I haven't tested. I use, again, I just use this just for this file, but within Claude, I can reference, you know, an agents.md file. I can then reference in open code specific files, the UI of open code specifically, but even Claude is better than cursor CLI for things like this. So the question becomes, what is cursor CLI better for? And when should you use it over something like Claude code or, you know, open code? And the answer for that is, I guess, really, it depends. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, it depends because it depends on what you're wanting out of a specific uh, LLM. If you're wanting GPT-5, then obviously you can't use Claude code. If you're wanting, you know, the cursor flavor of prompts outside of cursor itself, then yeah, probably cursor CLI is going to be a great use case. But I would say for 99% of use cases, probably open code is better. You can bring your own API. And so that key is probably going to save you on costs that you probably otherwise would have incurred from something like cursor. Or if you have a Claude plan, open code works for this as well as Claude code. But I haven't found a use case for cursor CLI just yet. Of course, I do have a $20 a month cursor plan, and maybe that's good enough, but I still run into limitations all the time. And I would probably, if I was using my own API key instead of Claude, Opus, or Sonnet, I would probably just use open code with a GPT-5 API key. Now, I will note that cursor rules were kind of ahead of their time in the sense that, you know, these rules.md really kickstarted how you interact with LLMs within code. And so there are probably those, you know, flavor of system prompts that Cursor CLI is using that just might work better. I haven't seen that to be the case in the few uh, kind of instances that I have generated projects with this. Again, within a JavaScript project and a Laravel project. But if you already had rules that were created for the stack that you like, then Cursor CLI might do a better job interpreting those rules, especially if you are using them within Cursor than something like open code does within its own set of rules or even Claude code. But for me, I usually have the LLM generate that and then I add to it any little things that I, I want. Maybe it's like Tailwind specific stuff or Laravel specific stuff or even package specific stuff on a project basis. So is Cursor CLI worth it? It might be in the future. It might be for you if you like that terminal feel without having to jump ship completely from cursor or have an additional payment to something like Claude code or use your own API key and you just want to stick within that 
you know, that subscription that you have within Cursor, then yeah, maybe. I just don't think it has, you know, the right kind of implementations and features just yet as something like a Claude code or an open code. And that would be the first thing that I would pull from. But Cursor CLI, I just might get it right. If anything, I think the you know, the added benefit of having multiple things competing to at one another makes everything better because now we're just going to get better features within Cursor CLI that might interact with better features within Claude Code and something like Open Code as well. So you be the judge overall, just use something that gets you building and keep creating.